So now there's two bolts in the front and you just want to break them. And you'll have to just work them out with a spanner. And you're going to need another on the bottom. So I'll just use my that, but it won't work. So you need another half inch. So you got two bolts left that holds this on and they're half inch. So the best way to do it, since they're from underneath and on top, is uh, you just have to get two half inches. And these are kind of thin, so it works really good because um, it's going to be hard to get in there. So like this half inch is thick as a craftsman, it won't get it won't get in there. So I'm just gonna I broke that one. I'm just gonna get it off. And unfortunately, this one's uh, you just gotta use the spanners. I'm going to put the bolt together so I know which one it is. All right. So now that's all the bolts. Um, so the trick to this is behind each end there's shims. And so before I break this off and kind of lift up on it. I want to make sure this is kind of loose. Uh, or you got to keep it loose because um, you want this to kind of have enough play so when you lift up on that thing, you don't destroy your shims. Works of the wise. You see me breaking everything and then 
using my gun. If you try to use your gun on that, that'll laminate this grill. And uh, it's easy to break. So now this is should be loose enough, hopefully. When I start breaking things, it'll. Gems from being busted. I'm just going to gently tap. loose now. Good deal. So there's our, there's our head. Alright. Yeah, you can smell the old fuel and stuff and it's just pretty, pretty gnarly. So here's your shim. So you just gotta be careful when you pull up on it. So you don't mess up your shims. Oh, I got one holding. I took it out. So at the factory, you know, they put these shims on there because they measured the clearance. So you don't want to break these or lose these. Otherwise, you got to buy a shim set. Sit there and measure it, make sure it's good and all that. So this thing will lift up out of here now. All right, to get the pistons out, you just got to... Just kind of work it up. Tap on a little bit. Just 
big thing is once you get it. See, these are in a little. There's a little pin in the bottom of these where the reed valves sit in. And the main bearing. So, let me show this. So if you look down the cylinders, number one looks pretty good. Number two looks pretty good. And this was a running engine, so I expected them to look pretty good. And... <clears throat> So here's your little pins. Make sure you don't lose them, dudes. So I'm gonna pull them out and put them in my bag. So there's the number one piston. And notice the rings are just seized. So there's some movement on them, but not a lot. But you see this, this is a lot of scarring. Pistons still be good, but the rings are just not really functioning the way they should. You can see it's locked right here. Like it's not even moving. You can push on them from the other direction. And you can see they're not even they're not even moving. Now, this one is perfect. Those rings are moving just fine. And then this one, the rings are perfect as well. And this one as well. So our number one, the reason for that scarring is because these rings are old. They probably got hot or something and they're not properly moving back and forth. Now it's possible to break them loose, but I would say you wanna get new rings because they're gonna be worn. So I could put new rings on this and just hone out those cylinders and as far as this scarring, um, I've got another piston. I'm going to see just how bad it is, if I can maybe smooth it down. Because the piston, what I will do, or I should do, is just measure the circumference of this and see if it's close to spec. I'm going to check my cylinder walls and make sure they're close to spec. This one was sticking as well. Probably this is a result of that. So, and then the reed valves, man, they look really good. Um, probably just need to check the clearance, make sure there's no 
issue there. I got one that's maybe a little. But you just take a feeler gauge and go between that reed valve, make sure it's in spec. See, like this one's a little looks a little loose to me. But we can check it and see. And then if you notice there's your little where your pin is. And this this bearing seems to be seems to be pretty good. That's pretty good. So there's your where the big pin goes, and then this one's there's where the other little little pin goes. So I think the next thing to do is order some rings, and uh, I can get all the rings off and do that all in one uh, pass, and. Um, We'll go from there. Anyway, so far so good.